Life is a journey made up of experiences, some good, some bad, some happy, some sad. And we may all be different, but we are connected through the fact that no matter who we are, our stories all have hills and valleys. And so tonight, we dedicate this episode to the beautiful phoenix which rises from the ashes. Welcome to Sim Soul Sessions. Everybody and welcome to the show. Tonight we continue our healing journey with two women who didn't allow life's trials to stop them in their tracks. Today they are loud and proud with their stories, hoping to help others as they go along. Stacey Ann Smith is a consummate communication specialist and media practitioner who has decided to share the valleys in her journey after realizing that time does not heal. We're going to get to her in a moment, but first, we are checking in with one of my all-time favorite SimSo Sessions guests who very bravely shared her story here with us of a plot, or how a plot hatched by someone she loved almost resulted in her losing her life. Jodi Ann Gray uh, joins us now. Jodi Ann, howdy. Hi, Simone. How are you? First of all, let me extend condolences to you and your entire family for the loss of your mom. Um, you know, you're an extremely strong woman, and one thing I need you to know is that we're right there with you. Oh, thank you, my darling. I appreciate that very much. Um, how are you doing? We haven't seen each other in a while. We've spoken. I know. But tell me I how know. things are going with you. Since we sat in this space, first of all, um, I've seen a number of things happening with you, but just tell me first off, um, those first moments after the show, tell me how those were for you. Um, you know, it was an eye opener, Simone. Um, it's the first interview that I've really done of its kind. And, um, you know, outside of the relationship we had, I saw what your show was doing. It was motivating, it was inspiring. And that's what I wanted to be a part of. And I was happy I took the opportunity to speak to you. And, um, you know, the first moments after the show, it, it, it made me realize that it was a part of my healing, talking about it so openly and freely. And um, it also made me realize that, you know, there are many persons who reached out to me in my DMs, um, on my messengers, and, you know, just shared with, with, with me that they are with me and they too have endured similar paths and, you know, similar situations. And, you know, I'm an inspiration to them. So it was a real big eye opener for me. And I'm, I'm extremely grateful to you and the entire team. Oh, we are grateful to you for sharing because that show elicited such an amazing response from people who needed strengthening and you gave them that strength. You are an amazing uh, individual and I see that since the show you've come home, right? You came home for like a vacation and had a yes. replenishment of your soul. I know you're I going did. through some things now with grandma, um, yeah. but I also see you wearing a shirt that's my favorite in the series. That's part of your clothing line. So yes. the amount of growth you've experienced since then um, the valleys are still there, but exponential, no? Yes. A lot has happened since. Um, you're right. I was home, and it's so funny. I came home like six weeks after the show, and the response that I got from people was overwhelming. You know, sometimes you're in a situation, and you hear the naysayers and the negativity louder than those who are really cheering for you and really asking you to go on and inspire them the way that I have. And I've been able to see that after the show with the response that I got when I came home. And you are right. A lot has happened. Um, you know, God makes no mistake. Um, since the show, I have continued on my path to media and communication. I've launched my company, Jody and Gray Inc. Hey. Um, it's been doing extremely big things here. Um, hey. and, you know, I, I am that. actually grateful and surprised at the same time. You know, I was one of the main voices for the Joe Biden and the Kamala Harris campaign. Um, you know, I've been doing a lot of hosting gigs for the city here in Florida. Um, I've been doing a lot and I've launched my clothing line. Um, you know, one of the things that I want to do outside of me just focusing on media and communication, I want to be able to inspire and let people know that, you know what, no matter what you go through, you can go on. Um, you know, my situation is not the only one that people go through, but 
I just want people to understand that there is life after tragedy. Um, you know, and this shirt is one of the shirts that I have um, come up with out of my line. Um, it's faith over fear because sometimes, you know, we have to really understand that our faith has to be bigger than our fear in order to succeed in this life. Girl, you got that right. How is our princess doing? She is fine. A lot has happened since then, too, because since the release of my attacker, um, I had to, you know, share the situation with her. I had to tell her, um, you know, exactly what, what's going on. The good news is that I have a smart child. Um, you know, she, she's, she's, an, she's an amazing little girl, as I keep saying. And, um, you know, we continue to heal together. Now we are healing together because before, you know, she was oblivious to a lot of things that were happening and how it all went down. Now she has the full details of the story and we both are healing. That must together. have been so difficult for you, Jordan. It was one of the most difficult times of my life. But, um, you know, one of the things I'm grateful for is that I have... I think I've done an okay job with teaching her resilience. I think I've also done a good job with teaching her the importance of, you know, just forgiveness and healing. And, um, you know, we, we're going to be okay. We yeah. are okay. Yeah. We are okay. Yeah. And I, we are think, okay. I think that's the point of this show, you know, Jordian, is that, you know, you get knocked down seven times, you get up eight because you don't have a choice. You stay on the floor, you're going to get run over. Um, yes. And even if you stay there for a little while, at some point, you have to try and make a you step have to. to sit up one day. And then when you can, maybe you put up one leg and then one day you put up another leg. And hopefully there's somebody with a hand to help you up. And I think that's what we are. And I want to tell folks who are watching this show that, you know, the people who come on this show are not guests. We be we become family, like all of us stay in touch. We support yes. each other. And I think yes. that's such a fantastic, fantastic thing. It's been yes. nine years since your attack, Jodian, but you're yes. stronger today than you've ever been. A word before we go to break, just to everybody who wants to know how you're doing and how things are going with you. Um, again, I just want to thank everyone for their support, for everyone who sent me a kind word, um, you know, people who continue to message me and encourage me. I thank you guys so much. Um, we are living in a time where attack on women are becoming more frequent. And I am going to be making my voice loud and clear that I am against it. And we're just asking that we all come together and just try to help to stop these demons who are hurting and killing our women in our society. Thank you, my love. Thank you for um, stopping in, sharing with us an update for other people who care so much about you and care so much about uh, your little one. And um, Thank you guys. I know we'll be in touch, but I know bigger, bigger and better and more amazing things are coming from you. And I look forward to talking about them as they happen. I did promise you that you would be the first person to get a copy of the book and that is going to happen. So don't worry about it. You'll see me again. Of course, you're not going to place. I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you, Jodian. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Good it's luck. Have Jody a wonderful day. You too, my love. When we come back, we're going to meet another amazing woman who did not allow life's trials to keep her down. She has already written her book, we're going to talk to her in a minute. Welcome back, everybody. Our guest tonight, PR and communications specialist, Stacey Ann Smith, who has recently penned a book called Time Does Not Heal, where she chronicles her valleys in her life and how those valleys um, have put her now where I'm going to call the mountaintop. Am I right, Stace? Amen, sister. Amen. <laughs> yeah, because you tell me that you've, you've never felt this good about yeah. yourself, about life, about your whole outlook is different. Yeah, for sure. Oh, my gosh. Okay, we're going to get to the book stuff later, but I want to get to the stories um, that helped you to put that book together. First of all, I'm going to start from a place of commonality. Um, you lost your dad two years ago. I did. I just lost my mom two weeks ago. Um, that's a critical part of your book as well. Yeah. And a critical part of your life because mm -hmm. your dad shaped a lot of who you are. He did indeed. And a lot of the steps you took as a young woman. Mm -hmm. So how did the book help in, in your healing journey with regard to that loss? So losing my dad was the most difficult part of my life to date. My father, and I say it often, 
was the greatest man on earth, next to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, perfect by no stretch of the imagination, but he was indeed a man of God, and he loved his family, loved his children, and it, his death was very sudden. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I had spoken to him the night before. We used to chat often, so we were talking about something in the news, and he said, um, a call came in, and I said, Daddy, I'm going to catch up with you later. We had been talking for maybe about half an hour, and he said, all right, pretty girl, which is how he normally ends our conversations. And by the following day, I got a call that he had collapsed. He just, just so. Just walking. So. Walking. Near the farm. Yeah. With his wife and just died. And it rocked my world. I was confused. I cannot describe in words what it felt like. And I know that you know what I'm talking about. It is so real. It doesn't make any sense. You have all kinds of thoughts in your mind about what is happening. You don't know what to do with yourself. You literally go into a place of retreat, mm -hmm. which is what I did. Mm -hmm. And it was very hard. Writing the book was therapeutic in a way because I got to celebrate him to share my story, my, 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 my remembrance of him mm -hmm. to a wider audience, of course. And also through his death to help other people. Because the truth is, same as you know, we will always go through valleys. Every one of us will have to deal with the loss of a loved one. It is sad, but it is a fact of life. And in writing his story and in writing about how I was able to pick up the pieces, so to speak, I get to help other people who will go through that. Yeah, man. You helped me. I read it. Um, I'm reading everything I can at <laughs> this point. Um, but I hear you talk about Daddy. This is Daddy Carl. Yes. Um, all right, pretty girl was how he used to yeah. refer to you. And then there was Daddy Folks, mm -hmm. who was your My grandfather. grandfather. Mm -hmm. Your dad went to, to work on a cruise ship when you were a young child. Yeah. Um, no matter, I guess, how many times Daddy said, all right, pretty girl, to you, your grandfather, right. I think, was, was where your sense of self right. started to deteriorate. Because he was the father figure that I lived with. So I'm from Marvely. Originally, we lived in a big family house with um, my mother, my brothers and sisters, my grandparents. And so Daddy Folks was the one who was there with us day to day. And he was a, a different kind of human being. Um, in looking back and even in writing about it, I recognize that he was who he was. And we couldn't change him. I certainly can't change him. Um, he also died a couple of years ago. And the truth is, no matter what influence or what impacts you, you still have to be okay. Mm -hmm. You have to find a way to turn that around for your good. Mm -hmm. And it was very important for me to, first of all, recognize the impact that he had, why it impacted me in the way that it did. I mean, in the book, I, uh, there's a chapter called Lessons from a Clothespin. Yeah. So he used to put a clothespin on my nose because my nose was too big and ugly. And his was straight. His was straight. So if you were of a lighter hue, you were good. You were good. But you, your nose was too big, so he used to put a clothespin on it. Mm -hmm. um, your skin was too dark. Mm -hmm. Um, you were you were too f fat. Yes. And and ugly. Did he actually use the words fat and ugly? Well, he never said I was fat and ugly. It was mostly about your skin color and and the nose. The nose and hair was a big thing for my grandfather. And you have to understand, you know, Sim. Um, he grew up. He was born in 1921, which means he would have been raised in a time when we were still dealing with the vestiges of colonialism. So he was a product of his environment. Mm -hmm. He was who he was because of the time in which he grew up. Even now, there are people who think of that course. you're... Well, we had Chuck Finder on this program who's, you know, yeah. 
who is dealing with that in at this point in his life with his own his own mother but that affected you in a way that took you into adulthood yeah. Um, yeah. and and led you to make some pretty not so good choices for yourself yeah. For especially sure. where your relationships are concerned. And I want to talk to you about that after we take this break. We'll be right back with more uh, with Stacey. Impact of her experiences as a young woman and how that affected the rest of her life and ultimately her marriage. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. We're back with Stacey and sharing how time does not heal. I'll explain that to you a little later on in the show. But talking before the break about how being raised, um, the role of your grandfather in your life. And um, you say in the book that you felt that this was where your self-esteem started to take a blow. And so by the time you got to the age of, you know, 19, you meet this man who just catches your eye yes, and indeed. makes you feel like <laughs> the world is. But from the start of meeting him, yeah. you know that something never right. Or did you know then, or is it in hindsight? I think this is the man you eventually married. Yes, there were, there were red flags. But as I, as I explained in the book, I grew up very sheltered. So there were a lot of things that should have been obvious red flags to me that were not. And I, I tell you, the value of being in a place of wholeness mm -hmm. is really inestimable. When you are broken, you will, the world that you're looking at, the lens that you're looking at, will skew everything. So for instance, um, when I met my husband, he was living with somebody else. No girl. You know I should never <laughs> have gone there, right? You know? But I did. And things that you would see that should have been obvious that, you know, maybe we are not a good fit didn't immediately resonate with me. And that is because you you were so privileged to get that attention that he would sometimes give you mm -hmm. that that was enough? That was because enough. you were fat and ugly and so if you yeah really yes indeed you cannot imagine how important it is when you feel low when you are in a low place what it feels like to get a little bit of affirmation regardless of where it comes from it can be like manna from heaven so when you're getting just enough to make you feel as if you are whole, you are worthy, then you latch on to that and it becomes the thing that sustains you, even if it's not wrapped in the best package. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you went through that for 19 years. Yes, we, we built a life together. Um, there were many hills and valleys as well. And uh, at the end of the day, um, I walked away because the relationship did not serve me anymore. We had um, communication issues was one, but there was also infidelity. And it became chronic, I call it. And then you get to a point where you say, this is going to kill me off. So let's talk about that, right? Chronic is relative, I guess, depending on who is being affected. Mm -hmm. Because first there was one child outside, then there were two children outside, then then it became three. Three. Did it get and then we got to did we get to four? There were three. There were three. There were three. This is along the course of the marriage. Why did it take you? so long and I'm not, it's not a judgmental question I'm no, genuinely it's a, curious it's a good and question. I think I know the answer and what was it about that ultimate straw that broke your back so you start off in your marriage and for me I meant my vows when I said them for better or for worse and though you had episodes that were bad there were episodes that are good mm -hmm. and 
it happens to a lot of women of faith, men too. You believe that you are doing the right thing by honoring your marriage and you believe that God can do anything. Honoring your marriage, even if it means dishonoring yourself. Even if it means dishonoring yourself. Add to that, um, once you're in a situation where you are bombarded with that kind of negative emotional energy, it does cripple you. It affects your ability to, to be. It affects your self-confidence. It kills your courage. So even if you would get up today and you say, I can't take this no more. You know, I, I, I need to do something else. You don't have the courage to actually get up and do it. What made the difference? I got to a place where and, and, and so I, I, I thank God all the time because God has a way of making all things work together for your good. And even at the point where I thought this was the absolute worst thing that could happen to me, God was setting up the different areas of my life for me to make this move. So the situation just got to the point where I couldn't stay. I just couldn't. I had a responsibility to myself. I really felt as if I was dying emotionally um, and mentally. Um, I, I, dying. I, literally dying. Going. You said you thought you were going crazy. I definitely thought I was going. You crazy. went on the street and ended up in somebody's car yeah. back. And you yeah. don't know how it I happened. don't know how I got there, Simone. I drove out of this complex on South Avenue. The next thing I heard was boom. And when I looked, I was in the back of somebody's car. I just, and I didn't fall asleep. My mind just went. And I also had a responsibility to my children. So I had been going through a period where I was just snapping at everybody, you're barking at them, and just being very hard to live with. And I had to show my daughter that this is not okay. You this, are worth more than this. This is not what love looks like. No. And I can't tell her that she is worth more than this and then I settle for less. I also had a responsibility to my son to say, this is not how you are supposed to treat a woman. This is not how you are supposed to treat your wife. This is not how a man should live. And so I said as hard as it was, because don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. I loved mm -hmm. the man. Mm -hmm really mm -hmm. and truly loved him but you have to get to a point where you love yourself more more and it cannot be that you love somebody else to your own detriment and as hard as it was i said no i have to walk away and it didn't happen overnight either it took me quite a while to pull myself from the relationship we went back to counseling and we went back and forth and ultimately I made the decision and it was it was hard but I'm happy that I did. Now here you are <laughs> and you say it was the best decision you've made it's given you a new lease yeah. on life and you've been able to forgive him. Yes How? indeed. We're going to talk about that <laughs> miracle on the other side of this break. We'll be right back with Stacey Ann after this. <laughs> Thank you for staying with us. Stacey Ann Smith is my guest tonight. We're talking about her valleys and her book, Time Does Not Heal. Um, Stacey Ann, let's talk a little bit about forgiveness and how you got to that place where you not only were able to deal with what was happening with you, but where you felt you had to forgive yeah. your now ex-husband. Forgiveness is very important to healing. You cannot heal if you do not forgive. Is that true? Full stop, 100%. You cannot come into the fullness of your healing, your wholeness, because unforgiveness is like a trap. It keeps you imprisoned. There, it, it, it's a, a, a phrase that um, Nelson Mandela has said, but I think originally it's by this American author um, who said, 
Unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting your enemy to die. It really saps your energy. It can literally lead to physical illness, illness and manifestations. It breeds bitterness. Um, so many negative things that will kill your spirit, will kill you physically. Mm -hmm. And it's so important from a, from, a, from a religious and a faith standpoint, as you know, I really believe in the Bible and the, the, the principles of, of the Bible. And I mean, we all say the Lord's Prayer, you know, forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. Most of us do not forgive people readily. But when you have been through some really, really trying and heartbreaking situations, you have to forgive mm -hmm. because you can't move on. You move on physically, but emotionally you are still trapped. Psychologically, spiritually, you are still trapped. And I went through the point where after I had that, I, I call it my, 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 um, my tipping point when I ran into that, that car on South Avenue. And I just really, I prayed, I said, Lord, what do I do? And he answered. I, I, I say in the book, I... I will go into fits of weeping. And then when I calm down a little bit and just sit quietly, God speaks. And he said, forgive your husband. And I said, huh, what? <laughs> <laughs> what now, sir? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know I need to do that, but later. And he said, no, forgive your husband. Go and tell him you forgive him. And I said, but I don't forgive him. I don't feel like I forgive him. But I obeyed and I went. I remember the Saturday morning I went and I said, I forgive you. And he said, okay, what does that mean? You know, are we going to try to work things out? And I said, no, not really. Um, it just means that I am being obedient. And for months, I didn't feel as if I had forgiven him. But I kept saying it over, over and over. I forgive him. I forgive him. Because it's really him. for you. It's not for him. It, forgiveness for you. is about it's for you. you. Um, you speak of yourself as a woman of faith, which is something I know. And you, you speak to praying and, and hearing um, from God. But a very important point you make is this notion that we try to pray things away. Oh, no. And then, which is something in church you do, mm -hmm. you pray about it and the Lord will, mm -hmm. you know. But when you ran to the back of that car, you were like, where's my therapist's number? Mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. <laughs> because the faith without the works. It's dead. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very important that you lean in not just to your faith and a higher power, but you must also work it through. You have to use the tools that are available to you. It must also be practical. Faith is about action. It's not a hairy fairy. You know, anything you're going to do and anything you believe in, because you believe it, then you do. Mm -hmm. So you have to walk it through. You have to tap into those resources, find a counselor, whether it is somebody at your church or through a community group or through work. I mean, many places of business offer counseling services. Um, it, it, it could be any number of things, but you have to put in the work. And you warn that it's very hard work. Girl, it's messy work. It is. It's unpacking a lot of things that you don't want to look mm -mm, at, mm -mm. don't want to judge through. And taking responsibility for your own actions. Because you do say that you had to chide yourself for being complicit yeah. in what yeah. happened to you. For sure. Because if you think that all oh, these things are happening to me, life is happening to me, then you are a victim and you cannot overcome if you are a victim, you have to be a victor. And in order to do that, you must accept that you have control. You may not be able to control everything around you, but you can control the decisions you make, the thoughts in your mind, the very thoughts in your mind you can control. Mm -hmm. So we went through this process with my therapist where you can train your thoughts. When he said it to me the first time, I'm like, okay, can you train your thoughts? Yes, you can. You can get to a point where as soon as the negative comes, you stop it. You said no, and you replace it with a new thought, an empowering thought, a wholesome thought, something that allows you to be patient and kind with yourself. And once you begin 
to go through that process where you accept that I may not have made all of the best decisions. It is what it is. We are where we are. What next? Exactly. Because mm -hmm. the rest is the best. Mm -hmm. um, support, you, you said you felt like you were drowning. Um, you said I was only able to keep afloat because of an amazing group of talented professionals whom God had handpicked for my team. I was droning, barking at my children all the time, more forgetful than I had ever been. Um, you speak about your hair falling out, bald spots and all sorts of things, but a village around you yeah. made a ring fence around you and got you to where you are. And your village wanted us to share this with you. Hi, Mom. So just came here to say I love you a lot and I love you because of the person you are. You're humble, you're caring, you're just an all around great person and you make me feel better about myself every day. God made someone special when he made you and trust me, he broke the mold. You're an authentic person. You are someone who lives your truth. You inspire so many persons, including myself. I'm very blessed to have you as a friend for over the past 20 years. I've seen how you've taken risks in your life to further yourself, but also to drive and to ensure that you accelerate your journey towards achieving your dreams. And even now, you've gone on to another chapter where you're choosing to tell your truth and inspire others. You are a phenomenal woman, an authentic person, you are truly someone who has a fantastic sense of humor. And really, I must say again, a true inspiration to many persons. I saw a quote once that says, your sister is your first friend and your second mother. This so describes the relationship I have with Stacy. Our friendship is so deep, her wardrobe is my wardrobe and vice versa. And she's the best secret keeper along with my sis, Carrie. This is truly my second mother, you know. She's my go-to person for everything and anything. And she also embodies that kind of bond that is irreplaceable between us. I am so proud of you, my forever love. Continue to shine and soar above the stars. God knew what he was doing when he really gave me you. It's a very best gift. Growing up with Stacey was a blast. She was always the life of the party, the go-getter, and the best big sister girl. Stacey, you are a perfect balance between being a powerhouse of knowledge, wisdom, and ridiculously hilarious. I never talk to you and not laugh, nor go away feeling a little wiser. Congratulations on publishing your first book because this is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm so proud of how you opened up and, and shared and was just so vulnerable. And I know that a lot of people are going to be blessed as a result of this book. Hi, Mom. Um, I just wanted to stop by to say how much I love you and how proud I am of you. And how much you've grown and as your number one fan I can't wait to see what you do next. You have been an amazing friend for 25 years. Mighty strong woman of God with an amazing sense of humor or dare I say humor mixed at times with a hint of insanity and despite your success you continue to be humble and authentic. Since my first born, my first love, I knew you were special from the day you were born. And you still are today. You live up to my expectation and much more. I love you and I'm so proud. You are an incredible human being. You are amazing. You are wonderful. You are light and you are love. And I am so blessed to have you in my life. And I've told you that before, that I count you as one of my blessings. And from being my manager, to being my colleague, to being my friend, to being my, someone I consider my sister. And to see you embark on this next chapter in your journey of life, I'm truly amazed. And I wish you every success. 
we've spoken at length in our very many candid conversations about mental health and mental fortitude and that sometimes life will just kick me in our face you know? <laughs> you know those are the words we use life will kick you in the face but you have to find that inner strength and you have to find that inner brave to overcome those obstacles. And I'm so happy that I'm here with you on this journey. I'm so happy that I have an opportunity to see this come to life. And I just want you to continue to remember what you always say. You know who you are and you know who you are. Stacey Ann Williams Simmit. It's not that I don't know how to pronounce your name. You know the running joke between us. But I'm so absolutely proud of you. I remember when you walked in that day for the interview six years ago, how after that interview, I, I fell in love with your mind and I knew immediately that you had to be part of my team and that you were gonna add tremendous value. And you have proven me to be so right on this one. I recall to the journey that you've taken, Stacy. I witnessed you breaking into a million pieces and I watched as you went through all of that. But I knew that you had the strength in you and you have again proven that you have the strength of a woman. But it tell you a long time, Stacey say, that testimony of yours is something powerful. And I've lived to see it, I've lived to hear it, and I know greater things are in store. So Godspeed, continue to trust in him, continue to hold him up as your sure foundation. And I know more is ahead as you continue to break down those barriers. Love you enough, Stacy. love you enough, and all the very best. I'm blessed to have you as a friend and to have been a part of my life. And I want to say all the best. You deserve all the joy and ensure that you enjoy every minute of it. Bless up yourself, Stace. Congratulations again, and I love you to the sky and back. Mwah. Stacy, I love you, and you are an inspiration to me, and I'm so proud. I pray God's richest blessings for you, my dear, and I have no doubt that you will continue to touch lives the way you have touched mine. God bless. Love you, Tita. Congrats on the book, and I love you a lot. Bye. All right. Your village. My peeps. Your peeps. <laughs> your peeps. It's so important. I started saying this a couple of weeks ago after each show, to give people their roses while they are here. Yeah. And I think that has been underscored for me in a very vivid way in the last couple of weeks. So I'm giving you your flowers while you're here because you deserve. And when we come back, we put the, um, the lid on this one with, with Stacey Ann. Right back in a minute. everybody final segment of the show you do you take it lady it's something you just said to me during the show that I think it's very important for us to include before we go um, and I know there are women watching who are yeah. in the situation you said uh, uh, one of the hardest parts of the journey has been forgiving yourself forgiving myself because you find yourself in a situation where you have made mistakes you may be in a place where you, it doesn't feel good. You don't want to be in this place, but you get stuck. And you often say to yourself, you know, you're too fool. You know, why you do this? Why you stay so long? You know, you know, the enemy will tell you you've wasted your time, you know, after all of this time. And you have to get to a point where you can forgive yourself for making mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes in it is not the end of the world. You make mistakes. It is what you do once you recognize that you have made mistakes. Forgiving myself, I think, was just as hard as forgiving my husband. It was just as hard because you say to yourself, you know, I'm an educated girl. May not done some fool fool. May have sense. So why would you stay in a situation that was hurting you so deeply? every day but then you have to get to the point where you say it is what it is we are where we are it's gone it's done mm -hmm. you cannot go back and change your past 
but you can definitely change the future. Where do I go next? You have all the control in the world about that. It takes about taking your power back. Taking back my power. And that was something I recognized that I had to do. And once I did that, it was, what does that mean? Became, okay, how do I take my, back my power in this regard? Mm -hmm. And it manifested itself in so many different ways. And as I shared in the book, your ability to be and do is heavily dependent on that power, knowing that you have the power to shape tomorrow, your tomorrow. It's entirely up to you. Yes, you are going to have challenges, and yes, life going kick in your face. Kick in your face. Me say, <laughs> about one that. kick in your face. Like a big shoe print, I can see it. Girl, but, yeah. but you can get up, wash your face, put on your good clothes, and say, what is next? Knowing who you are and whose you are is also very important. I am a daughter of Zion. My father is the richest man in the universe, so me can't pour. Me can't pour. Mm -hmm. My situation now may not be what I want it to be or where it will be eventually. But it is a journey. It is part of the road that I have to travel. And you have to appreciate that every step of your journey is for a reason. There is a lesson to learn today, different from the lesson you're going to learn next year. The good thing about the kingdom of God is not like our school system where whether you pass or fail, you have to move on to the next grade level. If you don't pass, mm -hmm. learn the lesson, you're going to have to keep learning and keep doing the lesson over and over again. So the key is to learn the lesson, to be open, to say, God, what do you want me to learn in this moment? How do you want me to grow right now so that you can move on to the next level? Okay, we got it. The book is called Time Does Not heal and what you're not really saying is that it don't heal by itself but you're saying it can heal but other things have to be done you in have order be, for that to you happen you have to be deliberate about your healing mm -hmm. same you have to be deliberate time by itself you know you hear people say time heals all wounds not by itself you wouldn't get a gunshot wound and sit there with it and not go and get it treated even it, though it may be a flesh wound if you don't get it dressed and it's going to gonna get grangy, gangrene you're and you can't go to chop off. And do. many of us are walking around um, with emotional wounds and we're bleeding all over our lives. We are making a mess of relationships. We sabotage re re um, our opportunities that we get because we are so broken. Mm -hmm. So, so I, one of the main goals of this book is to get our people, as you know, Sim, when I really do the get therapy and pay attention to the emotional well-being thing too good it is to get people to stop saying i don't have to do anything i've been hurt i can just stay here so and i'll be fine it's not going not to happen. Gonna happen i talk about it all the time therapy 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 counseling 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 talk to somebody sweeping it under the rug is going to make you sick yep i can tell you from first-hand experience um the book again time does not heal Amazon and Sis will give you more information on where you can get it. But I'm so proud of you, my sister. We had it, we had it up. We can try it again. Fancy. This is what her book looks like. See, dear? Yeah, that's how we do yes, it, Sis. Indeed. We don't just hold up books. It's we, true. We do it the right way. I'm saying. Production. <laughs> don't make Gloria and Johnson come for you. Thank you for sitting with me. This Thank is, this is long me. overdue. And that other story is for another time. Yeah, you know, right? But um, <laughs> A Woman's World is also Stacey's show. So if you can, you can catch that as well. Um, it's a woman's work. Yes, indeed. Um, all right, guys, no time for affirmation. <clears throat> so let's wrap things up. Uh, starting today, sometimes we wonder why bad things happen to good people, why certain situations we don't think we deserve reach us, oftentimes for long periods of time, and sometimes in quick succession. But it's called balance. And while we are grateful for the good, we have to be just as grateful for the bad because the bad things build us and teach us lessons in a way that we will never forget. The harder the lesson, the tougher the experience, the more we should be thankful for what it will teach us. 
And I know that sounds absolutely crazy because getting kicked in your face by life is not good, but I promise you what I'm saying is true. If you are still standing, even though sometimes you may not feel your legs after an event that turns your whole world upside down, if you can look up, you can get up. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow. You could be struggling into next year, but just know that time is the master. So be good to yourself and patient with yourself and graceful to yourself and get the help you need. Surround yourself with the support that so many of us who have been there talk about. And one day, even through the tears while they're falling, you will be able to smile again. We are affirming tonight confidently I am grateful for the hardships and how they will build me into a better person. Thank you for watching our show this week. We're glad you were with us. Hope you found some soul food here today. We thank Stacey again for sharing. And we will be back next week with another story of the power of the human spirit. Until then, we wish you every blessing and we remind you to count your blessings. <laughs>